This presentation is about managing our relationships, giving and receiving love. Another important aspect of self-actualization and happiness involves in experiencing and maintaining positive and loving relationships. Our mental health, our success, our fulfillment in life largely depends on creating our healthy relationships. Yet relationships can also be very challenging. Difficulties within the family or in a partnership are major causes of depression. Changes in the composition of families, for example, the increasing numbers of single adult families and single parent families, results in individuals facing it, finding it difficult to get the support normally given by their own families, hence increasing their reliance on governments to meet their needs. A 2011 report by the Organization of Economic Economic and Cooperation and Development, OECD, warns that over the next two decades, governments will struggle to sustain the current levels of support for seniors, for single adults, families, and for single parent families. And these individuals, they predict in their report, will become the new poor. In light of this, fostering abilities that strengthen our relationships and families are very critical. So building networks of loving relationships will grow in importance as time goes by and will become important assets to all of us, for all of us. Let us build extended family networks. Let us now discuss the principle of giving and receiving. Life on earth is a complex web of natural and social systems, all interconnected, reciprocally feeding back onto each other. This is known as circularity. Circularity is the process where an effect, an output, feeds back onto its very cause and input. This is an important principle for relationships. You may have heard the saying, what goes around comes around, or karma on the law of cause and effect. What people say and do in their relationships have consequences that feed back onto themselves. Our outputs will eventually become inputs that feed back onto us. A biological example of, of systems or circularity and inputs and outputs is the blood circulatory system. Poor circulation, that is giving and receiving, causes health issues. Poor communication, also giving and receiving, causes relationship problems. Conversely, good giving and receiving underpins positive relationships and personal growth. We forget at times how important good communication and sharing love is. For example, a child that does not learn to share can have friends and can't share in the benefits of friendship. A child who only receives cannot progress. This is also true for adults. Love is the central value of life. Since humans are social beings, the central value of life is to realize love. Viktor Frankl detailed his experience in a Nazi concentration camp in his book. In the camp, he came to the realization that love is the greatest ideal we can aspire to. He describes his realization about the meaning of life after having a conversation with his beloved wife in his mind while standing in a work crew in the freezing cold. It should be noted that he did not even know that she was alive or dead. She was in another camp. He said, For the first time in my life, I saw the truth that is set out into song by so many poets proclaimed as the final wisdom by so many thinkers, the truth that love is the ultimate and highest goal to which man can aspire. Then I grasped the meaning of the greatest secret that human poetry and human thought and belief have to impart. The salvation of man is through love and in love. You know, I have often wondered about where the source of my value comes as a person. 
if I lose my job, will I find, where will I find my value? It is predicted that artificial intelligence and robotics will put masses out of work. So I thought, what will happen to these irrelevant workers in quotation marks? Where will they find their meaning if they don't have work? Ask the people in poor countries and they will answer relationships. We need to value people more than jobs. That is a great realization because love is the reason for creation and possibly the purpose of life. Once we understand that love is the central value of life, then we need to find out how to realize the ideal of love in our lives. Love, ideals, and joy cannot be achieved alone. I need someone to love. They are primarily found in that other person, found in our subject or object partner of love, in our spouse, our children, our parents, relatives, and friends. Joy is an outcome of giving and receiving love with our, our partner of love. Joy remains dormant until we exchange love. We all have felt joy, even just thinking of a loved one, just like Viktor Frankl. How wonderful love is. What if we are our creator's object partner of love? Living for the sake of others, the simple principle for happiness. Certain values and behavior underpin relationships that are harmonious and mutually beneficial. The most important is giving and receiving love. As this happened, the value of the exchange in increases for both parties. And as a result, partners seek to give more to the other, again increase, increasing the value of the relationship. Additionally, the bound of love creates a strong incentive for people to act morally towards each other. You ever thought about it? A heart of love is actually the primary motivation to act in the best interest of, un of another. The first value and behavior that underpins relationships is to live for the sake of others. Martin Luther King once said, life's more, most persistent question and urgent question is what are you doing for others? I have asked myself, why should I serve and help others? What's in it for me? I have to say this is a dark place. I will tell you of such a moment. I was part of the Nelson Mandela Committee in Australia, and I was asked to attend the annual Mandela Lecture. I didn't want to go. I thought to myself, what's the point of all this living for, this, for other stuff? Well, I ended up going out of a sense of duty to my fellow committee members, the speaker, of course, spoke about the life of a man who understood the importance of living for others. I wasn't convinced. Came home. I was a little bit resentful, and I was in a self-centered space. A week passed or so, and I snapped out of that mindset. I began to remember the joy, the meaning and value that comes from caring for others. Dr. Moon said, to realize that we exist for the sake of others is the great achievement that changes our lives. This has been true for me in my life many times. So the question is, what comes first, giving or receiving? When we relate to others, you and your counterpart have some expectation or hope from that relationship. So here comes the critical question, what comes first, giving or receiving? I have found a simple principle that has brought happiness to my life. The love between my wife and I was always renewed when I applied the principle that my life is not about me alone, but also about her and others. This mindset changes the focus from self, which is conducive to happiness because it fosters loving relationship. So the magic is seeking to give first. In most cases, when we give love, it's reciprocated. That's the secret. The magic is to seek to give first. The driving force for harmony is the intention of living for the others. 
Without love, there is no harmony, happiness, and peace. The simple principle is that genuine and sustainable love is realized by giving first, while false love is self-serving. The self-serving individualism we often encounter in society is due in part to a lack of understanding of how love is generated. I came to understand that adults often have a mindset like teenagers, wanting to be loved, expecting to be loved first by others. As a human race, we are very intelligent. We have learned many things, but in some way we are still very young when it comes to learning to love. And thank you for listening.